Hello. Today I want to talk briefly about François Poulain de la Barre, a 17th century French feminist thinker. Although not the only writer in early modern Europe to call for equal or improved rights for women, Poulain is extremely unusual and introduces a distinctively new element into Western thought. He has been described as the first Cartesian feminist. Poulain's, however, appears to have been an essentially solitary voice. His adoption of feminism seems to have been part of his own original thinking, and there was little immediate response to his ideas. Like many of the lesser figures of 17th century thought, our knowledge of his life and intellectual contacts is limited. Poulain was born in Paris in 1647 and completed the traditional scholastic education there, later studying theology at the Sorbonne. According to his own later account, he had little sympathy for what he had studied, and instead, after being introduced to Cartesian ideas in 1667, became a supporter of what was then still considered a controversial set of ideas, which were condemned by the Roman Catholic Church and censored by the French universities. His first book, published when he was about 25, was a Latin translation manual, and the following year, in 1673, he published anonymously his discourse on the equality of the two sexes, with the subtitle, A Physical and Moral Discourse, showing the importance of ridding oneself of prejudices. This was followed over the next two years by a book on the education of ladies and another replying to some of the arguments against gender equality. Despite his unorthodox Cartesian views, Poulain was ordained as a Catholic priest in 1679 and served as a curate in rural Picardy for the next nine years, before abandoning his ministry in 1688 and returning to Paris. Shortly thereafter, he converted to Calvinism and moved to Geneva, where I think he initially returned to teaching language. He published a French pronunciation guide in 1691. He also got married. He published at least once on a religious topic, a book on Protestant doctrine about the freedom to read the Holy Scriptures. He died in Geneva in 1723, in his 76th year. Poulain's adoption of a pro-feminist philosophy was remarkably radical for the time and was linked directly to his Cartesian views. In early modern Europe, most discussions about what were believed to be women's natural abilities and their appropriate status in society or the church were based on appeals to the Bible and authoritative authors, including the ancient philosophers. Poulain rejected all such authorities, including divine revelation, relying on reason and experience alone. He also made what were essentially two sociological observations. First, he identified custom and tradition as a social reality and as a major source for beliefs about women. And secondly, he opined that everything men said about women should be suspect because they are both judges and litigants in relation to gender. The idea that many common beliefs are prejudices, that is, judgments made about things without having examined them, was one which was common amongst Cartesians in the 1670s, but Poulain may have been the only one to extend this idea to socially accepted views of women. Thus Poulain asked whether the scholastic teaching that women's abilities were inferior was factually true or merely prejudice. Could the reality of women's status in society be explained by reference to women's nature? Those who opposed gender equality believed that women lacked some natural ability, making them inferior to men in certain areas of life. But Poulain argued that there was no evidence for gender differences other than the obvious bodily functions linked to procreation. And, crucially, those specific differences were not relevant to the social offices and functions uh, from which women were excluded. Of particular importance was a philosophical acceptance that there was no difference in mental abilities between men and women. The mind has no sex was a common nostrum of the day. If this was true, 
then there was no reason why women shouldn't be professors, judges, or even ecclesiastics. More generally, in terms of epistemology, Descartes had objected to scholastic explanations of every natural phenomena in terms of some distant form or essential quality. Nor could we know the nature of something directly only from the properties that were predicated of it. That is, you can't establish the nature of something purely on the basis of its attributed properties. Thus, for Poulon, it was not possible to explain women's alleged inferiority from their natures, nor even to say clearly what their natures were. It was true that most 17th century women could not read or write and were not trained to exercise public office, but that did not mean that they could not acquire the relevant skills. For that matter, most men of the time were also uneducated and unfit for public office. Rather than nature, whatever that was, women's inferiority in society was at least partly the result of their lack of education, opponents then saying that they were unsuitable on the basis of their lack of education. This was a circular argument. Women were denied an education and then denied equality on that basis, men further arguing that women did not need an education if they were excluded from public office. This exclusion had been reinforced because women had become accustomed to their own exclusion. For Boulin, the only way to actually test whether women were men's equals would be to give them the same access to education as men and then enable them to compete for all civil and ecclesiastical offices. Without such a test, beliefs in women's inferiority were simply prejudices. Again, Poulain rejected the view held by opponents of gender equality that exclusion of women was just and acceptable because it was long established by custom. As to the impact of Poulain's ideas, this appears to have been quite limited in France. His books were reissued more than once, including a publication of Egalité under his own name in 1690. But his ideas were generally ignored, albeit that the avowedly Catholic scholastic feminist Gabrielle Souchon took up some of his themes in her work, Voluntary Celibacy, in 1700. By contrast, his work had significant influence in England after an English translation of Egalité had been published in 1677 as The Woman as Good as the Man. This was later plagiarized by an anonymous writer, possibly Lady Mary Wortley Montague, calling herself Sophia, in 1739 in her work Woman Not Inferior to Man. Thank you for listening.